Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. Thank you so much for joining me. We have an hour together for chair yoga. And today is our third week of focusing on the pelvic floor. So if you join me for week one and two, we've now identified where the pelvic floor is. We've connected with the pelvic floor and we're able to relax the pelvic floor. We understand that the pelvic floor is part of the core of our body and that um, it's the base of it and it works in harmony with the diaphragm. And therefore, breath is so important as the diaphragm is the muscle that controls the breath. So today we're going to be working on um, two different kinds of movements in the pelvic floor. This is strengthening through the pelvic floor. We're going to be, now we've identified the pelvic floor, we're going to lift together and up into the pelvic floor. I'm going to do that in two ways. We're going to be holding that for endurance for um, a certain length of time while we're breathing, keeping everything else soft. And we're also going to be doing some um, quick lifting and releasing. Now it's vital that you understand the letting go of the pelvic floor. So going back to two weeks ago, and um, last week we also worked on it all, um, as well. The letting go is really, really important. So if that is still feeling like you're not quite sure what that means, then go back to those and um, revisit this when you feel like you have that connection in letting go and releasing of the pelvic floor. Most problems from the pelvic floor come from uh, over tightening of the pelvic floor. So um, we really need to isolate and understand the letting go before we add on to that. What we're about to do today with those in, that engagement is um, not recommended for anybody who's having any pelvic floor pain, who has any pain your, um, in urination or sex, um, and just general pain around the pelvis, please go and seek out a pelvic floor specialist or your um, family physician and, um, and leave this one to the side for now. Otherwise, we're going to be focusing on that engagement, lifting, again, endurance, and also quick lifts and movements. And the reason that we do that is because the pelvic floor is made of two different kinds of fibers. One are the slow endurance fibers, and that is for that deep holding and also the letting go. So the reason that we have those, that deep holding and stability is for the stability of our core, which we learned about last week. And it's for, um, it, it's for strength over time, hence the word endurance. We also have quick flick muscle fibers in the pelvic floor, which um, are about the other 35%-ish. And those quick twitch muscle fibers are there to um, hold when we need a little bit um, extra, when we're maybe lifting things or when we're sneezing or coughing um, or we're running or jumping, then um, those quick twitch mu muscle fibers are there for that extra support as, as well as the endurance ones. So we want to isolate both of those because a healthy pelvic floor has strength with both the slow twitch muscle fibers and the quick twitch muscle fibers. So um, we're gonna be doing a little bit of both of those. Okay, so we're gonna focus on our breath get ourselves centered and focus on our breath. And then we're going to be engaging that. And then we'll do a regular practice where we'll stop and engage. And then we'll come down to the earth and do the same thing. This is a video. So if there's, a, uh, if there's too much information or you want um, to stop and practice, then you can simply pause the video, of course. 
So we're gonna come to our comfortable seat. Sitting away from the back of the chair is again one of the great ways to strengthen through the core of the body, which is this kind of corset of muscles around the diaphragm, the pelvic floor, as well as the hips. Rooting down through your feet. Feet are a comfortable distance, maybe picking up through the feet or the balls of the feet and give those ankles a little wiggle. And then imagine um, flaring out the toes as best as you can as if you're stretching the soles of your feet wide and long. And then we'll take the feet all the way down to the earth. We'll take a big breath in. Exhale, taking the awareness down to the soles of the feet too. So feeling whether you've got shoes, socks on or bare feet, feeling the texture of what's underneath your feet, allowing your legs to sit heavy down into that support. And if you want to wake up that awareness a little more, you can push down evenly through both feet into that support underneath you. So we wake up the muscles of the legs. This actually will wake up the core as well. And then let that ebb away. So we now have that awareness to the support underneath us. We'll take our awareness up to our seat where we're connected to the chair. If you wiggle side to side, now this is important here because you want to isolate the pelvic floor. So wiggling from side to side, you're going to feel two bony bits underneath you as you wiggle from side to side. And they are the base of the pelvis, kind of underneath the pelvis. And we want to sit evenly through the center of those points. Sitting up through. So making sure the shoulders aren't forward of the hips or back of the hips that are stacked on top and therefore we have this kind of balance in those sit bones. Just take your awareness to the sit bones and notice the space in between left to right and right to left. So that is where your perineum is. This is part of the pelvic floor. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit later. So just being aware of that And then from there, we have this deep seat into the chair. So letting go of any tension and tightness, especially around that core, so we really can get that deep seat. And when you're ready, there's a rooting down to rise through the core, through the trunk of the body. So lifting up, the belly button kind of tucks in and up just a little towards the spine. Crown of the head is reaching towards the ceiling and the chin is tucked a little so the back of the neck is long. Roll through the shoulders a couple of times in your own way and when it feels good to you, allow the shoulders to settle away from the ears as we open up through the heart space, the collarbones are broad. And notice your posture here. Adjust and adapt to anything to feel better for you. Remember, you're the expert of your body. You're listening to me a little bit of the time, but what I say is just an invitation. So you're overriding anything I say with what feels best for you. We'll take a big breath in together. Keep the shape, let go of tension. And take a couple of breaths like that, maybe closing the eyes, softening or lowering the gaze. Mm -hmm. And then we settle into this moment and we'll check in and notice how we're feeling today, what's on our mind. the emotions inside. Just noticing them, no judgment, no need to follow them into a story. We're just being aware as best as we can. Notice how your physical body is feeling today. If there's anywhere that's feeling tight or tender that you need to take extra care of. If there is any tension that you can relax by a little shift of your body or taking some breaths, then please go ahead and do that at any time. 
Remembering there's no wrong way to do any of this. It is your way is the best way, taking rest whenever it feels best for you. And then we'll start to focus on our breath. A little deeper inhales and the longer exhales when you're ready. And with that slightly deeper breath in and longer breath out, we start to smooth the breath as best as we can. So we start to travel with the breath and our awareness to the top of the breath, steadying and smoothing the exhale all the way down to the bottom as best as we can. And it doesn't mean that it's perfect, this is a practice. It's like riding a bike, we didn't get it perfect the first time. So we've got those deeper, longer breaths in and out, and we've got that steadiness of breath. And with that breath, I want you to start to notice your breath in your chest and heart space, maybe your upper shoulders, that expansion of the inhale, the softening of the exhale. And this is as we get into whole torso breaths, so we'll do it part by part, but if you know what you're doing, of course you can go ahead. And so chest and heart space, back, upper, um, ribs and lungs. And we're controlling the breath. And taking the awareness down around the lower rib cage, front side and back. And there's this expansive inhale and contraction of the exhale. And now we're getting down into that diaphragmatic breath as we inhale and the lungs fill the diaphragm, push it down and that exhale as the air is released, the diaphragm lifts. We'll take our awareness all the way down to the belly You can take a hand there or just your awareness and there's this expansive inhale softening on the exhale. You might even feel that expanse through the kidney area or the lower back. And now awareness to the pelvic floor between the pubic bone and the tailbone and between those sit bones. On an inhale, there is an expanse of pushing down gently, not a bearing down, it is a natural movement. And then the pelvic floor um, lifts on the exhale. So whole torso breaths here, as if your whole torso, front, back, and sides, and the pelvic floor, and maybe for some of you, the upper shoulders, everything expands like a balloon inflating on the inhale, and the exhale is the softening, the contracting. Beautiful. So we're now going to take your awareness all the way down to that pelvic floor. Again, on the inhale, it draws down, and on the exhale, it draws in and up. And it comes from the tailbone through the pubic bone. But I want you to focus for now around your anus. And then when you're ready, imagine your anus lifting up and in as if you were stopping gas. Just a little, we're still breathing. And then we're gonna release that. Mm -hmm. So just as if you were stopping gas and it's not a real deep clenching where everything is tense, it is just a lifting up and in. 
a lot of people like to think about like the um, anus picking up a blueberry and lifting it up and holding it. The breath is key here. So we're following that steady breath. And then when you're ready, on an exhale, you're lifting the anus up and in and holding. And we're gonna hold that for 10, nine. Keep breathing, eight. Seven, relax your face, relax your belly, six. Relax your sit bones, your butt, five. Four, keep breathing, three, two, and one, release. Okay, so that's a 10 hold for around the anus. Now we're gonna take the awareness to your perineum, which is between your anus and your genitals. And from here, we're gonna do the same lifting up. So, keeping the breath going, we've got that steady breath. Awareness to the perineum between the sit bones and between the pubic bone and the tailbone. So it's pretty much um, in the middle for most of us. So for there, with that breath, you're gonna lift up and in with the anus. We're still breathing. And then you're gonna draw the perineum up and in. And we're gonna keep it there for 10, keep breathing, nine, eight, relax your jaw and face, seven, relax your shoulders, six, relax your big seat muscles, five, keep breathing, four, three, almost there, two, and one, releasing. Nicely done and take a few breaths with that soft breath and the perineum coming up and down. Nicely done. From here, we're gonna do the um, anus. We're gonna go through the perineum and we're also going to connect to the urethra. Now, that's where we pee. It's the most subtle amongst them. And consider again, all these three parts picking up a blueberry, or if you like, some people like to think of elevated doors coming together and lifting. And again, it's a hold and we're gonna hold for 10. So keep the breath steady. On one of your next exhales, we're lifting the anus up the perineum up, the urethra, the urethra up, and we're staying for 10, keep the jaw soft, nine, keep breathing, eight, relax your face and shoulders, seven, keep going, keep holding, six, five, keep the pressure, four, keep connected to the breath, three, almost there, two and one release completely and take a few of those full body breaths and so this is the endurance holds this is what is imperative for our posture for our bladder and um, bowel control throughout the day for our the structure of our core body everything those are the endurance um, muscles in the pelvic floor. Now we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be quick flicks, and we're going to be doing that for 10. So we're going to be doing the whole pelvic floor, the anus, the perineum, and if you can connect to it, the urethra as well. And um, do the best you can. This is a practice. If you're there going like, I have no idea what's going on, that's okay. You just keep coming back to it and we're going to do it on the floor as well which will help because gravity is not against us there so take some steady breaths in and out feel the pelvic floor moving with the breath just as the diaphragm 
is moving as the breath comes in and out. We've got that whole torso breath. So we're going to take our awareness to our pelvic floor. And on the next exhale, I just want you to lift up and then relax. Lift up and relax. Beautiful. Lift up and relax. So we're going to be doing that, but we're going to be doing quick flicks. So it's going to feel like you're holding in and then there's this constant lifting up and I'm going to count to 10. Go at your own pace. You don't have to match my pace, but it's quick flicks. So first of all, we're steadying the breath. And then when you're ready, lifting on an exhale up. And we're here for 10 quick flicks. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and let it all go. And again, about the weight of a blueberry that you're lifting up through your anus, your perineum, and the urethra. We're gonna do that again. We're gonna do it two more times. And if it feels like you're not quite getting it, know that that is perfectly normal. It is a hard um, awareness to build, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna do that two more times. So, steady breath. The breath is continuing. And then on an exhale, we're lifting up, and we're there for flick. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Nicely done. Now I want you to notice if there are other areas of your body, a lot of the time it's the belly or the big glute muscles or even the jaw or the face that we get tense. Some people even tense their hands. Know that it's completely normal, but what we're trying to do is isolate the pelvic floor, keep everything else, else soft so we're strengthening where we're supposed to and we're not um, strengthening through the glutes or the face instead of the jaw. I'm going to do that one more time. Keep the breath steady. And then when you're ready, on an exhale, we're drawing up and in. Four, ten, flick, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Beautifully done. Now you can go back through the video and do that as many times as you want. I highly recommend doing these long holds and quick flicks a few times a day, maybe three times a day to start with. If you're not knowing on earth what is happening, you can use your hands, flat palm, when you're on the toilet is usually the easiest time when you've done everything you need to in the bathroom. And then you can take your fingers to your pelvic floor and you will notice a gentle lifting with those endurance holds and a pulsing with those quick flicks. So that's another really great way to do it. You can also take a mirror and have a look at your perineum and notice the engagement there. Again, the holding and the quick flicks. Now, this is a practice. We are strengthening the pelvic floor, so do not be surprised with the long endurance or with the quick flicks, how you can maybe do it for the count of three or four, and then everything kind of goes to pot. That's why we're doing this. We're doing it to strengthen, so do not get disheartened. This is um, actually a really great Thing because you're going to be able to notice the difference as you are strengthening your pelvic floor and then in a week, uh, two weeks from now, it's going to become second nature to you and you're going to be able to hold for 10 and you, those quick flicks are going to be much easier for you to contain and sustain for the whole 10 counts. So that's the pelvic floor. We're going to come back to that when we come down to the earth. So let's get to movement. Rooting down to rise. Take a big breath in. Exhale it out. 
And then from here, we're gonna drop those arms next to us, next to our torso. We're gonna circle through both shoulders, inhaling up, exhaling down in your own way. Keep the breath steady. Eyes can be soft, lowered or closed, of course. And then let's pause and go around in the opposite direction. <coughs> and then when you're ready, we'll go around in the opposite direction. Slow, steady movements. The breath is guiding us. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep those hands dangling down as we come to stillness. This is the inhale on the exhale, right ear towards right shoulder, inhaling up and over. And two more, either side. Not pushing past the breath, keeping that breath stable and steady. Last one, either side. And then we'll come back up to center, hands resting on the thighs, sitting away from the back of your chair if you were using the support of it as we come down into cat and cow. So the inhale, the hands draw back towards the pelvis as we open the heart, shoulder blades come towards each other. Exhaling, fingertips on or towards the knees as the belly scoops in and the back ribs push towards the back of the chair. We're just flexing and extending through the spine. Steady breaths, follow the breath in and out. I'm getting a little movement here. If you want to add on with the arms. On the inhale, let's take those um, elbows back as we open the heart and on the exhale we're going to push them forward so it's a circular motion it's almost like we're rowing in a rowboat and of course this is just isolating the spinal movement so if the arms are too much take the hands back down mm -hmm. Notice how maybe the arms exaggerate the movement for you, that opening in the front and the back body. And then we'll pause and then we'll take that around in the opposite direction. Whichever direction you were going in, we'll switch those arms up. And if the hands are down, sliding up and down at the thighs, then just continue what you're doing. You can lift the gaze, of course, on the inhale, draw the chin down towards the chest on the exhale. This is not unlike the shoulder movements we were doing a moment ago. And let's take one more here. Coming back to center and dangling those hands down. So we've got the extension and flexion. Let's get that side body moving. So this is the inhale. On the exhale, we'll dip down with those right fingertips. Inhaling up and exhaling to the other side. So again, shoulders over hips here. What likes to happen is we like to draw one shoulder forward or back. So trying to keep that back body as if it's sliding up and down an imaginary wall. Back of your skull is also resting on that wall. So the chin is drawn in a little. So we're not drawing the head forward. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting that lateral flexion in the spine. One more either side. And when you're ready, you're going to come all the way up to center. I'm going to take those hands one on top of the other. So that maybe this is arms, um, elbows, sorry, forearms, maybe it's wrists, and maybe it's hands. Just depends on when you roll your shoulders back and down, what feels comfortable for you. Rooting to rise. And from here, as if we're kind of rocking a baby there, we're just going to draw circles. Keep the spine neutral. And that again, that movement through the arms and we're getting that rotation through the shoulder joint. We're also getting in through the um, backs of the shoulders there as we 
draw the arms one side to another. You might feel it in different places. Now those circles can be nice and small. Or you can start to bring those elbows up and overhead. Notice where you're feeling this. Keep the breath steady. The breath is always guiding. And then the option here is to keep the spine neutral or to start to bring the upper body into the movement. So we're getting that gentle rotation through the spine. The feet and the pelvis are rooted down. So this is an upper body movement. You can always rest, of course. And let's take one more. Notice which direction you're going in. And we're going to pause, come back to center, release the hands, opposite hand on top. It's going to feel a little odd. And then we're going to go around in the opposite direction. Those circles can get bigger or smaller. And then the option is to bring the shoulders, the upper body into that gentle rotation. Feel this in your body, adapt, adjust it to suit you. The breath is guiding you. Let's take two more. And after the last breath, we're going to bring that spine back to neutral unless it's already there. And the hands come down, releasing. Give those arms a little bit of a wiggle. We're going to turn those palms out, maybe up as the shoulder blades come towards each other. We're going to rotate those hands down, back behind you, maybe even up again. And the shoulder blades slide away from each other. So getting that rotation through Again, that shoulder girdle, option to stay here. You can lift the hands to any height, but no more than shoulder height. And we're getting that full rotation. It's starting through the fingers, and then it trickles all the way through the arms to the shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. One more, staying for that last exhale, wherever those arms are. And then coming all the way back down. Any intuitive movement to release any tension, go ahead. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Nicely done. And then from here, we're going to be coming down to the earth. So making sure you have everything you need for coming down to the earth. And I will see you down there, making sure you have everything for relaxation as well, extra layers, etc. See you there in a minute. Here we are again, down on the floor. We're going to come to our backs, making sure again you have extra softness, extra padding if you need a folded blanket underneath the back of your neck because that releases your throat. Anything that makes you feel more comfortable, go ahead. Knees to the sky, feet to the floor, as always. And we're going to Pick up the hips, send them a little closer towards your heels and place the hips back down, making sure the feet are a comfortable distance for you. And then from here, take a big breath in, exhale it out, soften, lower or close the eyes. And I want you to come back to that full torso breath here. Take the awareness down to the pelvic floor and notice how as the diaphragm gently descends, the pelvic floor gently descends too. On that inhale, so everything expands on the inhale, softens on the exhale. And we're gonna come back to those endurance holds and the quick flips of the pelvic floor. And some people find this a lot easier because gravity is not working against you here. So a great way to go inside is to close the eyes 
and then take your awareness between those sit bones and between the pubic bone at the front of the pelvis and the tailbone behind. However you want to imagine it. The sit bones coming to the, um, the everything. Bleh. Now, whichever works for you, and you can try everything. So I want you to take your awareness to around the anus. And as if you were stopping gas, just lift up and in. And we're holding. Take the awareness to the perineum between the anus and the sexual organs and just draw in and up again. As if only as if you're lifting a blueberry. And for those of you who want to, connecting to the urethra and drawing in and up there too. And it is a hold. And we're holding four, ten. Relax everywhere else. Nine, relax your jaw, your face. Eight, keep holding in and up. Seven, six, relax the belly. Five, keep breathing. Four, three, two, almost there, and one, release. Long hold. Let's do that again. Either lifting that blueberry in and up or maybe elevated doors coming together and lifting up and then that exhale is the elevator descending and the doors opening again. Okay, so eyes soft and closed, awareness to the pelvic floor and when you're ready we're drawing up and in around the anus, the perineum, the urethra, and we're holding four, ten, nine, keep it strong, eight, keep breathing, seven, relax your shoulders, six, five, relax the belly, four, relax the big glute muscles, three, almost there, keep connected to the breath, two, and when you're ready, one and relax. We're going to do that one more time. And if you're aware of a particular area in your body that you are tensing for that hold, please take your awareness there. And as best as you can, keep softness and relaxation present. So I'm just going to count now. So when you're ready, on and Exhale, there's a drawing in and up, and we're holding four, ten, nine, keep connected to the breath, eight, relax, seven, six, relax where you can, five, keep that pressure, four, three, just the pressure of a blueberry lifting, two, almost there, and one, releasing. Take a big breath in, exhale it out. Okay, we're going to do the quick flicks here. So if there's any tension in your body, please relax it as best as you can. And then we're going to do those same holds, but we're holding and pulsing. And I'm going to be counting. I'm going to do that for 10, pulsing for 10. So when you're ready on the next exhale, we're gonna draw in and up and pulse. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Take a breath. And we're doing that again, again. I want you to be aware of where else in your body you're tensing. See if you can keep softness there. Focus on the pelvic floor. So when you're ready, on an exhale, we're drawing in and up, just the weight of a blueberry, lifting and pulsing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, release. Beautifully done. And one more here. So on the next exhale, when you're ready, we're drawing in and up, and we're pulsing here for 10, 
9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release. Beautifully done. And from here, draw those knees in, give yourself a hug, awareness to the pelvic floor, and that expansion on the inhale and softening on the exhale. So it's almost like it blooms, and because we've got our knees and we've got a little more pressure in the abdomen here, it is not a bearing down, we are not making this happen, it's naturally happening with the breath. Nice. Keep that right knee drawn in. Take the left foot to the floor. Hand to that right knee. We're going to start to circle through the hip joint. So drawing circles with that right knee. The hand can rest on the knee if you like or extend that left leg. If you do not need the guidance of the hand, you can take the arms in a cactus or a T grounding through the upper body a little more. If you want to add on, the leg can extend as it comes away, crossing over the left leg if it's extended, and we get bigger circles. When you're ready, we'll pause with the knee up by the chest and go around in the opposite directions. If any momentum is involved here, see if you can slow it down. As big or smaller circles as feel good for you. We're getting that um, rotation through the hip, that range of motion. And then the next time that knee comes up into the chest, we're going to keep it there. If the left leg was extended, place the foot back on the floor, knee to the sky, and that right ankle is crossing over that left leg. We've got figure four here. Keep the flex in the right ankle. Keep the right toes spread wide. Option to stay here. Option to extend and thread the needle as we hover that left leg. Hands come to the inside and outside edge of the left leg behind the knee, maybe in front of that shin. Don't allow, if the hands are gripping here, don't allow the arms, the shoulders, the neck to be doing all of the work. Engage the legs here. So the legs are um, part of that drawing in, the left knee drawing in, the right knee flaring out. And we're breathing, breathing into that right hip. That whole torso breath here, you might even connect to the pelvic floor because we have that little compression there. If you want to add sensation, shift the whole shape a little to the left. The when talking millimeters, that will change the feeling in the hip. Keep the tailbone rooted towards the earth. The pelvis is connected down so it's not curling up. And then when we're ready, we'll release that left foot down to the floor if it was still there, if it wasn't already there. Shift the hips to the right. Arms in a cactus or a T. Now any SI joint issues, you're um, unfolding that figure four and the legs are simply parallel. Otherwise, you have a couple of options here. You can take that whole figure four shape over to the left. You can cross the right thigh over the left and take bound roots here, even curling that right ankle around the left ankle. Right shoulder keeps connected and rooted. You can take the gaze over that right shoulder if you like, and whichever shape you're in for your supine twist here, take some nice, slow breaths in and out. Steady in, steady out. If the shape you're in doesn't suit you, don't be afraid to switch it up and change it so it feels better in your body. And when you're ready, I'm going to come all the way back up to center, releasing that right leg if there was a bind, bringing the pelvis back to center. 
left knee draws in here the right foot can stay rooted or you can extend the long left hand to the left knee and we're circling with that knee in the air so where we're circling with the knee the movement is coming through at that ball and socket joint on the left hip You can extend that leg along if that feels good to you, crossing over the right leg if it's extended. No momentum here, so there is slow, steady movement. Noticing what feels good for you here, always adjusting, adapting, resting. And the next time that left knee comes up, we'll pause and then take that round in the opposite direction. Focusing on the breath, the breath guiding the body. And then the next time that knee comes up, we're gonna give that a little hug, place that right foot to the floor, knee to the sky, unless it's already there, and we cross over the left ankle, keeping that ankle flexed to protect the knee, spreading through the toes. Great place to be in figure four here. If you want to add on, hovering the right foot, drawing the right knee in towards you in your own way. And again, if your hands are gripping here, see if you can lessen the pressure on your hands and engage the legs. So the legs are doing some of the work here. If both feet are off the floor, both ankles flex, both toes are flared. We're breathing into that left hip. If you want to lessen the pressure, the shape comes over towards the left, just a few millimeters. If you want to increase the sensation, we take that whole shape over to the right just a little. And it's not a lot. And we're breathing here. Soften where you can. And again, those legs are a part of the engagement. We're just, we're not just gripping with the arms, putting too much pressure on the neck and shoulders, building tension. Stay there for as long as feels good to you with that nice steady breath. We'll replace that right foot down to the floor if it was lifted. Pick up the hips and shift them to the left this time. You got the same options here. So you can stay in your figure four, maybe the arms in a cactus or a T, taking that whole shape to the right, um, left hip lifting. You can cross the thighs so they're squeezing towards each other into bound roots. You can bind that left ankle if you like, taking that over to the right. Or if that's not your cup of tea, you can bring the knees parallel in, up and over, taking any support that you need. And the left shoulder is rooted and we're breathing. Soften where you can. If there's any tension, tightness, let it go. Adjust things at any point to feel better for you. And when you're ready, drawing up and in, releasing any binds you may have had and taking the pelvis back to center. Giving those knees a little hug here. Take the knees wide towards the armpits. And then from here, taking the hands to the outside of the knees, shins, ankles, or feet. So we're in that kind of um, supine frog. The pelvic floor is open and wide. You're supporting your legs here with your hands. If this feels uncomfortable, take a bolster under your knees, take the knees wide, feet together like the opening of a book, and soften the gaze or close the eyes, take the awareness to the pelvic floor, whole torso breaths, so releasing any holding, especially in the pelvic floor region. 
Remember on the inhale, it's like your whole torso inflates like a balloon gently and relaxes. Whole torso inflating and retracting. Another couple of breaths here. Two more. You can always release if this doesn't feel good in your body somehow. Let's take one more breath for those of you who it feels okay for. Slide the hands to the knees wherever you are, draw the knees in towards each other and give yourself a little rock and roll from side to side. And from here, coming into your relaxation, knowing that it's not a shape that it needs to be one way or another. So maybe you do spread out wide, maybe you keep the knees towards the ceiling, ankles apart, we tempt the knees towards each other. Maybe you come to your side, well, there's another place that feels more comfortable for you. Doing whatever you need. And as you settle in to your shape, notice if you're there and you're like, it's fine, it's fine. It would be better with a blanket, but it's fine. And take the time, pause the video, take the time to get what you need to be able to relax. The more we relax in the body, the less distraction we have in the mind. And this is a super important part of yoga, this integration at the end. It's often the hardest part for a lot of people because our mind gets busy and we just wanna get up and into what's coming. And for some people, this feels like the best part of the practice. Oh, and there's a lot of people in between, of course. So, as best as you can, settling into comfort, offering yourself whatever is needed to relax and release. And as you settle in, Come back to that breath, that controlled breath in and out. And watch that harmony of the body and the breath moving together. That whole torso breath. And then on one of the next inhales, when you're ready, we draw in the breath a little deeper and hold. And then let it go like a sigh. We'll take another three like that. Big breath in, a little deeper in, holding and letting go. Two more in your own time. Every exhale, allow your bones to get heavier. And that last exhale, start to really release the breath. The breath simply lets go, allowing it to be in its own rhythm. It'll get smaller and softer. As we release control. And we allow ourselves this deep conscious rest. So the first part is letting go of our practice it's over, it's done, there's no need to go back over it, judge it, have an opinion on it. It's done, it's released. We've released the breath and we release the body now down into the support underneath us. As our bones get heavier, noticing tension on the inside of your body and offering that tension softness. Awareness to your joints, offering your joints just a little more spaciousness. Imagining there was more space in your joints, starting with your jaw. 
trickling down through your body to the tips of your fingers and toes. Inviting the muscles to loosen and soften. And then noticing those little pockets of tension that are still present. And offering them a few exhales, maybe a little shift so your body feels just 1% more comfortable. the skin relax and release as if all of the cells you can even imagine the cells softening the skin of your face your throat the heart space softens the belly and the hips palms of your hands and the soles of your feet relax too. As best as you can. Letting go, letting go. And for a lot of us, that mind is still thinking, thinking, thinking. Pulling apart the past, the future, trying to analyze things. And so we watch the thoughts as they come and go, noticing how transitional they are. Now I'm thinking about my grocery list and now I'm thinking about my friend or my loved one. And now I'm thinking about things I have to do. And we watch the thoughts as they come we watch the thoughts as they go, we start to notice a space between one thought and another. And we didn't notice it before, but there is a definite space in between one thought and another. And we start to take our awareness to those spaces. Allowing those spaces to get just a little longer. And then we start to notice the next thought come. And we find the space after that thought between the next thought. The spaciousness between everything. Stay here for as long as you like. Watching those spaces in between everything. And when you're ready, notice your body resting where it is. Notice the different textures underneath you. Maybe you feel and notice the clothes resting on your skin. Maybe you notice the temperature of the air on your cheeks. The air temperature coming in and out through your nose or mouth. feeling that harmony of the breath and the body. The breath moving in and out of the body, the body responding to the breath as it comes in and out. And we start to take a little deeper breath in. 
Exhale like a soft sigh. And keep those breaths coming a little deeper on the inhale, a little more release on that exhale. Until you feel that you want to bring some movement into your body and maybe you want to stay exactly as you are or starting to flick awareness to your fingers and toes so your head gliding side to side or your ankles rotating and from there maybe you need little to no movement as you bring yourself to where you want to finish your practice today maybe that's resting just as you are and for some of you, maybe you want to draw your knees in or stretch out wide. Listen to what it is that your body is interested in pursuing. Maybe you roll to one side or another and take some breaths there. Or maybe there's another shape that you desire. taking your time as we make our way to where we want to complete our practice and again maybe you don't want to move maybe you found that quiet place that you want to stay wherever you have chosen to be maybe the hands come into a gentle gesture of closing that suits you today Take a full breath in when you're ready. On the exhale, draw your chin down towards your chest and offer genuine thanks to yourself for your practice, for just being here, for moving, for breathing, for your attention. I thank each of you for being here. Take what we have done today, those long endurance holds and the quick flicks and maybe consider doing that two or three times a day to start to build that strength in the pelvic floor and i will see you next week namaste